you're allowed to go in and get baptized without setting it up way in advance. So I've been wanting to do this. It's what's on my bucket list. So we're going to just jump in and do it. The cool thing about this area is there's just sites all along the road and a lot of them have religious significance like this one here and I mean literally it was right off the road so we had to check it out. I'm really glad we did because it was pretty cool. We're here at Mount Nebo which is where Moses died but not until after he saw the promised land or the land of milk and honey and we're hoping to get up there and have a view of Israel. Uh, it's a little bit uh, dusty and hazy, so I'm not sure how far we'll see into it, but this is a very important place for the Christians and the Jews, and uh, I'm hoping it's amazing. So one thing that I really liked about Jordan that I wasn't really expecting as much as I expected in some Roman areas and over in Cyprus was that they had really nice mosaics and they kind of have their own little like color palette to it and this place had a lot of nice mosaics itself. Yeah, that wasn't really what I expected either. What I did expect was to go and visit the church. You see the big church on the hill and it was pretty cool. It's more of a modern church, but it does represent a place where there was a lot of history. There's actually evidence of habitation here all the way back to the Iron Age and so there were probably people here living in some of the structures you see down there possibly, although they look to be a little bit newer than that. Uh, when Moses came up and then the Israelites camped up here and this is where he saw the Promised Land for the first time. We're going to go over this way and we're going to go take a look at what he saw and see if we get lucky and see the Promised Land. Maybe they have some milk and honey for us to snack. Awesome. Good marketing idea, if not. We're looking at the Dead Sea over here. I'm not sure you're going to be able to make it out on the film, but the Dead Sea is here, which means the Jordan is running through here. And right at that break, is where Jerusalem starts and uh, I'm assuming that that's somewhere near where it turns green because if you're going to say the land of milk and honey it's going to have to look like somewhere that's a little bit more lush than where you are now. Uh, but again it's very hazy today so you can't really see much. If it wasn't for a little bit of like a textural change I couldn't tell what it is so I doubt you can see it either. the mosaics in the front were pretty cool but they were nothing compared to the ones inside of the church they were so beautiful especially that hunter mosaic was really cool and it kind of looked like they polished it which made it even nicer yeah it was kind of like this juxtaposition of like modern meets old and you had the different layers of the church and glass was over portions of it and then others were partitioned off and they still use it as a church today is much cooler than I expected. See right here, these steps down, and then obviously you had the mosaics. It almost looks like like a bath. And then if you come over here, there's a substructure here. And what I believe is this was actually a baptismal. So this is where they would baptize people, and obviously would have had no mosaic all around it and on the inside too. This would have been a really special place to be baptized but not as special as the next place we're going. And this is a relatively modern monument that they put here to recognize that Moses had died here. They don't know for sure exactly where he was buried. Some people say Moab, some people say he's in the West Bank, but he died here and then was buried elsewhere. But we remember that he died here because it's an important portion of the Bible. And that was a really cool little pit stop, but it was time to get back on the road. The driving here is pretty windy, and you guys know how I like that. Plus, there's kind of cool scenery. But the destination we were going to next was something that had been really important to me for a very long time. So the Jordan River is pretty big, and so there's a couple of different places that some people believe Jesus may have been baptized. 
but we decided to go to the one where at least most people believe is where Jesus was baptized. So your directions are probably gonna send you down to the site, but there's a border or something there and they won't let you go through unless you are on one of these little mini buses. And uh, it comes with your ticket and a guide to tour, which I didn't know and it's kind of nice. So we're gonna jump on this little mini bus over here and uh, we'll see you on the site. And your first stop along the way is a kind of small, a little bit underwhelming museum, but there are a lot of cool old Christian artifacts in there. And it's worth taking a peek around. There's a gift shop on the outside where you can buy different things, including white robes if you're gonna get baptized. But most importantly, grab yourself a water because it is hot in the desert. Behind me is the Jordan River. This is a really narrow section. It serves as a natural border between Jordan and Palestine. So right across the river. This is the site where Jesus was baptized, but the River Jordan has moved a long ways in the last 2,000 years, so they actually have like some sort of pumping of spring water over here so that people can still get baptized where Jesus was actually baptized. But uh, it is not anything like what I was expecting it to be. I thought there'd at least be a small river still running through here. You can tell where the river used to run. But uh, apparently it is further that way now. Um, and we're gonna continue going that way to some of the old churches, so I don't know if we'll get to see the river at that point or if that was our only taste of it earlier. And I have to be perfectly honest with you guys, I didn't really prepare for this very much, so I'm like, oh no, and we're walking past where Jesus got baptized and where everybody thinks that, um, and it's all roped off. And I'm like, oh no, what is this all about? Did we choose the wrong side? Um, but luckily, our guide was able to kind of sneak us in, and so I got to go down there and actually splash some of that water on me. Uh, might have been the most meaningful part of the whole thing, and being the mama's boy that I am, I called up my mom and I'm talking to her while I'm doing it, and I think she got more of a kick out of it than I did. The River Jordan is so important to pretty much all of Christianity, so you'll see bunch of different churches all along the river of all the different denominations. And there was a couple of cool ones that you could look at and it was like right next to where everybody gets baptized now. So this behind me is where the Jordan River has moved to and so now this is where people get baptized in the Jordan River and uh, very meaningful to them because this is as close as they can get at be in the Jordan River so it's wonderful we're really close to getting back into Israel right now so there's a few armed guards running around and things like that there's a lot more people doing the baptism on that side than there are on this side but it's very exciting and someday we'll come back here and do that it was really exciting to see the excitement on everybody else's faces and hear the cheers and all those things and to get to see people doing with water and speaking of what you ought to do when you're there, you absolutely need to wear something under the little white dresses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can buy these like white cloaks, but uh, we were there with a couple of people that didn't realize you have to wear clothes underneath it. And um, it was an eye-opening experience to say the least. Right, it was hard to divert your eyes and then you had to get your head back right if you were gonna get baptized. And once I did uh, repent or whatever I needed to do, it really was a nice time. It turns out that there's an Italian Protestant minister here and you're allowed to go in and get baptized without setting it up way in advance. So probably just use this for my family, but I've been wanting to do this. It's what's on my bucket list. So we're gonna just jump in and do it. All right. And he's gonna do mine in Italian. So now I've been baptized in English and Italian, so I think that's cool. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel cold and refreshed. <laughs> and it was a really awesome experience. And our last stop of the day was the Dead Sea. The sun is going down on another great day here in Jordan. 
It has been one for the record books. I am loving everything about this place. And the sunsets here on the Dead Sea are gorgeous. If you want to have access to the Dead Sea, you're going to have to pay a fee to go to a resort and use their beach. So we just decided to actually stay the night at a resort, spend a little extra money, and it came with this awesome complimentary breakfast. We're at the Dead Sea Spa Hotel for their free complimentary breakfast, and it's quite lavish and nice. There's so many different things to choose from. There's an omelet station, and there's meat, and you can have like brunch, I would say, here, and fill up, because even though Jordan seems like intuitively it might be an affordable place to eat, it is more on par with America than it is with some of the other Middle Eastern countries, so you'll want to save money right there. The coolest part about that breakfast was that there was a lot of like local delicacies along with some of the like Americanized stuff. And I think that Jordan really had some awesome food. In fact, we're actually gonna have like a Jordan food video coming out in a little while. So if you guys enjoy this, definitely make sure you tune in then. Yeah, everybody seems to love our food vlog, so Mark Weens, here we come. And on our way down to the beach, we met these really adorable kittens. There was like six of them, they were all running around and fighting and stuff. And uh, just a great way to start the day. The Dead Sea is so awesome. It's very beautiful. It's like the lowest place on earth, which is pretty awesome. And what makes it really special is its high salt content. There's actually areas where you're walking around and it almost looks like you're walking on a glacier because there's just this thick pile of salt that you're walking along. And it's crunching under your feet and it's kind of sharp and don't cut your feet on it. We took the like traditional mud bath mm -hmm. and we floated around and then Dummy decided he was gonna to try to dive for what looked like a little coin on the bottom, but you can't dive. You just like sit here like this and your butt's up in the air. Yeah. And then you come up and the salt rushes in oh, your man. eyes. I so wish we had that footage because <sighs> it was pretty funny and it was just such a great time. And I mean, it's crazy. It's like, it's not just, oh, you can float really easily. It's like, you can't sink. It's, it's insane. There's no diving whatsoever and if we ever find that footage, we will have to have a special video, but we looked forever and couldn't find it. Yeah, so. unfortunately, I think we lost it in Finland. Um, as you guys can probably tell by the change of hairdo, um, it's been a few months since we were in Jordan. We are trying to get stuff out as fast as we possibly can. And uh, YouTube lesson, you know, get it at least up on the cloud because yeah. this is the second time it's happened to us and it will not happen a third time. It was fun. We had a great time. We had all these great like oh, cinematic things, but we lost it. There you go. Yep, Hopefully you enjoyed happens. this anyway. Um, I guarantee you with everything in my being that you will love Jordan. You need to start planning your trip right now. And when you do find yourself in Jordan, remember, find, find yourself, yourself on the journey. journey. And make sure you guys check out next week's video and subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos on our Jordan trip. We're gonna be going to Madaba, which is really awesome. It has some cool mosaics and try some cool food. And we're also gonna to go to Karak, which is a really important castle and has some really cool history as well.